All right, zoology students. Let me turn this down a little bit. All right, this is it. This is the last video lesson of the school year. All right, this is going to be on birds and mammals. So enjoy, nice work. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, class AVs, the birds. There are over 9,000 species. They outnumber all other vertebrates except fish. They are distributed worldwide. And, you know, you can fly, so it's pretty easy to get anywhere you need to go if you can just fly over top of everything. So they are found everywhere. Characteristics of birds. Body usually spindle-shaped neck, which means a long, thin neck. Dis proportionately long, meaning on, on a lot of them, their necks are much longer than the rest of their bodies. Think about a swan or an ostrich. Those are some, that's a long neck. Four limbs usually adapted for flying, so aka wings. The epidermal covering of feathers and leg scales, so all birds have feathers. Uh, not all birds can fly, but they still even if they can't fly, their forelimbs still are wings, okay? But, and, but they all will have feathers and scaly skin on their legs. The skeleton has air cavities. Their body, uh, the bones are, have very large air cavities, uh, making them lighter. The skull bones fused with one occipital condyle. So an occipital condyle is the articular surface that your bone on your skull uh, articulates or rubs on the top of your spinal column. We have two articular condyles or occipital condyles on our skull. skull. Birds only have one, and this is, gives them amazing uh, flexibility and range of motion when it comes to turning their head. So think of an owl. You know, they all, the old wives' tale is that an owl can turn its head all the way around. It can't turn all the way around, can't do 360 degrees, but it can easily turn its head to 180 degrees, which is directly straight behind. Um, uh, I can't do that. So uh, that one articular surface gives birds incredible range of motion when it comes to turning their head. Um, each jaw is covered with a sheath forming a beak or a bill in the case of waterfowl and they have no teeth okay so that those are your characteristics of birds they similar to us have a four chambered heart they have a voice box near the jun ju junction of their trachea just like us a metanephritic kidney with no bladder so their their kidney uh, birds don't have a urinary bladder. So when uh, a bird uses the bathroom, uh, usually on your car, uh, its waste product contains both liquid and solid waste, whereas ours are different. You know, we have number one and number two. Birds just, they don't number it because there's just the one. Well, you know, and they can't count. So uh, anyway, birds just go and they both come out the same opening, whereas our waists are differentiated in that way. The sexes are separate, so you have, do have males and females. Females with left ovary and oviduct only, so they, instead of having two ovaries, they just have the one. So fertilization in birds is internal. The amniotic egg, which, which ha will have a lot of yolk, the big yellow part, that's where the developing embryo will get its energy for growth and development while it's in the egg. The egg has a hard cal cal calcareous shell, which means a lot of calcium. And as you know, bird eggs are hard. Um, they don't give very much. They, they break easily, but the difference is the reptile uh, egg shell is leathery. Incubation is, in, is external meaning that the eggs, uh, the parents will keep the eggs warm with their bodies. And the offspring are either precocial or altricial. So the difference is precocial is they hatch and they're on their own. Um, most birds that we're familiar with are our 
are altricial, which means the parents have to care for them. So, you know, your classic robin that's uh, nesting outside this time of year, uh, the eggs hatch, the babies are helpless and covered in down, and mom and dad need to bring food to them and take care of them until they're old enough to grow their adult plumage and fly away. Same with the geese. So if we were at school and we were looking outside, again, this time of year in the spring, we would see the mommy and daddy goose uh, walking along with their baby goslings and they're covered in down, they can't fly, they're very vulnerable and they need mom and dad to take care of them. All right, so that would be uh, the difference between precocial and altricial. Classification of AVs, subclass Archaeornotheres, the Archaeopteryx, which is now extinct. This is the bird that is believed to uh, have been one of the very primitive birds. It had a thumb or a digit on its elbow. It had teeth, uh, probably one of the very early first birds, first one of the first organisms to have feathers. Subclass Neothornes, these are the new birds, superorder Paleogagnathii, the ancient jaw, order Struthiformes, the ostrich, Order Reiformes, the Rias, flightless birds. Order Casiiformes, the cassowaries or emus, flightless birds. Order uh, Opterygiiformes, the kiwis, and order Tiniiformes, the tinnimus birds. Uh, all your flightless birds. So here, here are some representatives of them: the ostrich, um, the cassowary, the kiwi. Those are all of your your flightless birds. Uh, continuing on with uh, classification AVs, super order Neoagnathi, the new jaw. Other orders are order Sphenciaformes, the penguins, Gaviaformes, the loons, uh, Podiapidiaformes, the grebes, Procilioformes, the albatross, petrels, shearwaters, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing some of these just a little incorrectly, but bear with me. Order Cyconiaformes, the herons, bitterns, storks, and the flamingos. Pelicaniformes, I bet you can figure that one out. That's the pelicans. Anseriformes, swans, geese, ducks. And falconiformes, these are your birds of prey, eagle, falcon, hawks, and vultures, a.k.a. your raptors. All right, so here are some examples. This is the loon, and this is the grebe, okay? Order Griaformes, cranes, rails, coots, and the galleonoons. So you're waiting, some of your waiting birds. Charidiaformes, gulls, plovers, sandpipers. Columbiaformes, pigeons and the doves. Passatiaformes, parrots and parakeets, Cuculiaformes, the cuckoos and roadrunners, Strigiaformes, the owls, some of my personal favorites, Apatiaformes, the hummingbirds, Pichiaformes, woodpeckers and toucans, and Galliaformes, quail, grouse, pheasants, and the turkey. So those are all of the orders of birds. And now before you panic and think to yourself, are we going to have to know these? No, I'm not going to give you a big quiz or test over all the different orders of birds. Basically, this was just to show you how, as we go down through classification, they start to branch out and become more specific. All right, guys, I went a little long on the birds and mammals, so I had to break it up into two videos. So this first video is now at the end. This is the birds. And so at this point, you can go on to the next video, which will be the video lesson 4B, and that will be the one on mammals. So go ahead, exit out of this one, and find the next one.